according to data from the World Health Organization and other studies done throughout the world, there have never been so many anxious people in the world as the current generation. Anxiety, alongside with depression, is one of the main emotional and mental diseases that affect human beings today, especially in developed nations, those who are developing in the most developed nations. Anxiety. Let's focus on anxiety. Because when you compare the days of today with those of your parents and grandparents, you will see there has never been as much comfort and availability of material goods and services as there is now in the world, in society, even here in Brazil, even in Brazil. I remember when I left Brazil in 1991, I came back 2011, I stayed 20 years abroad. I was surprised on how in 20 years Brazil had changed. I'm not saying that Brazil is a paradise, but compared to the Brazil I have left 20 years after, there were many things that there was not back in my days. Today, 2023, even more. And it's not only in Brazil. In every developed or developing countries, you can observe that in the last 10 or 20 years, a tremendous advance concerning the availability of goods and services. For example, the majority of people, they have two, three, four, five pairs of shoes. I like to use this comparison because back in my days, whether you had a very cheap shoes from one brand or the other, you could have any color on those brands, as long as it was black. Those who are from those days, you know what I'm talking about. You used to go to the supermarket and there was not the abundance of brands that we have today, not even in the best supermarkets. But nowadays, there's so many options. I'm not saying that people have money to buy everything they want. I'm talking about the availability compared to our parents and grandparents, we are often more supplied than them, more served than them, and yet we are the most anxious generation, the generation that complains the most that it doesn't have this or that. Why? Anxiety. You can verify the anxiety. We can identify three sources for anxiety. One of those is the one I'm talking about already. Many are anxious because they focus on what they don't have. When you focus on what you don't have, you despise and forget what you have. Anxiety comes from this feeling. I don't have that. I didn't manage to get that. I want that so much, but I don't have money for that. Mine is the old version. I want the newest one. When the person focuses on what they don't have, they forget what they have, then they become ungrateful, they become futile, someone who does not live in the moment. They are always living in tomorrow, later. What about tomorrow? What will happen? And they forget the moment. So be careful on focusing on what you don't have. Learn to focus on what you already have. I'm not saying you should settle down and have no ambition. No. I'm saying that the excessive care with what you don't have generates anxiety. The antidote for this is for you to focus on what you have and to recognize it, to be grateful for that, to recognize the value of what you have. 
And I'm not only talking about physical, material things, I also talk about relationships. How many women focus on the husband of others or the husband they don't have? How many husbands they focus on the wife that they don't have and they forget the one that they have? They focus on the job that they don't have and they forget the one that they have. Like this, many are anxious. One change you can make, a quick change you can make in this regard is to start to appreciate, to turn your eyes, to put more attention on what you already have. And that what you don't have, you want to improve life, great. But tell yourself, with the right conditions, I will conquer something better. It's the first point, another source of anxiety connected to the first is for you to look at the lives of others. If you study the advancement of anxiety along the past years, you see that anxiety and depression have grown together with social media, with the creation of internet and much more when social media came about. What is the connection between these two things? The connection is evident. Back in the days, you look at the other side grass. You only had that to look at. Back in the days, you had the right side grass, the left side grass of your neighbor's grass. But nowadays, you can follow a profile just with grass on social media. You can follow the profile of gardens. You can follow on your social media profiles that you see types of grass that you only will see on the internet and never in real life. This is only grass, I'm not talking about other things. So anxiety and depression, they developed way more parallel with this new practice, culture, on looking at the lives of others. Back in the days I had two, three, five people to look at. Today I have thousands, millions, I have social media, many social media, I have many television channels, many ways on consuming content, series, songs, Anyway, it's so much information filling our eyes that when comparing your life with that which others apparently live, I say apparently because on social media always beautiful, then you say, my life is miserable, my life is a disgrace, look at this, I don't have this life. So, looking at the lives of others, Yes, generates anxiety, comparisons, greed, envy, and you forget yours. So, maybe if you have been having problems with anxiety, you should reveal your activity on the internet, how much time you spend looking, contemplating the lives of others consuming content that makes you unsatisfied and always frustrated, feeling the worst, that you're not like the other person and desiring, craving for the life of that person. Maybe you're going to the hairdresser, desiring the hair of that person. You go to the shopping, to the store, desiring to buy the clothes of the celebrity. You're doing everything that your idols do, because these things become idols in our lives. And the third thing that generates anxiety is that the person does not know what to do about their situation. When you have a problem, but at least you know what to do to solve it, you can channel your energies into what you have to do. It's frustrating to have the problem, but you're doing something about it. You know it's a matter of time to get over that or that will not be much of a big problem as it is today. But when you don't know what to do, many that we spoke to, I don't know where to start, they say. They sit before us and they say, I don't know where to start. 
and they start with a topic, they connect with something else, in 10 minutes time, they say, oh, I forgot what I was talking about. Why did they forget what they were talking about? Because they don't know what to focus on first. They don't know what to do. There's so many things that before they're thinking about the solution of a problem, they're already thinking on the next problem. Then despair strikes. Maybe you are like this, a despair in your soul that you don't know what to do. What's the solution for this, you may ask. What's the solution? I really don't know what to do about my problems, my life. I don't know what to do. Well, Jesus gave a secret to overcoming anxiety. If you read chapter 6 of the Gospel of Matthew until the end, chapter 6 of Matthew, Jesus says basically one whole chapter about anxiety. And he ends this chapter saying something like this. Look, you will never solve anything with anxiety. And the best you can do is seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness first and the rest will be added unto you. So if you don't know what to do, seek the kingdom of God, that he may rule your life and take care of your life. To seek the kingdom of God is, look, God, you rule my life because I don't know how to deal with it. You will rule my life. I want to know what you, Lord, tells me to do because I don't know what to do. So please, if you, Lord, can guide me, I want a direction from you. Seek for this. If you don't know what to do, seek first from him that he may rule your life, tell you what to do, and then when he guides you, and he will do that, put all your strength into it. And learn this. You won't be able to do everything at once. And it may be that before solving a problem, another one will follow. This is called life and will be like that until we die. But thank God we have His Spirit, His promise that He will guide us to the end. If today's video helped you and you know someone that could benefit from it, share it with them. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, you may do so now. See you later.